stuff in this video and what I'd like to try and show here is an extract of a presentation I made earlier in the year at the Revit Technology Conference in Melbourne about how IFC is capable of parametric and constraining relationships for defining things like project libraries and content libraries to use across multiple different software platforms. Um, here, it's a pretty crude family example, but I wanted to show something not just with plain faces, I wanted to show something with um, some shape and curvature to it. Um, it has been set up here in the Revit family um, editor, and it does have various um, types with dimensional constraints that can be flexed here within the Revit environment. So if I change some of the different types, we should see the family flex and we get different arrangements of the uh, or variations of a theme of this underlying geometry for uh, for defining this family. Now I'm going to export this to IFC. I am going to use my own plugin, um, which has been specifically um, developed for this particular prototype. Um, and if we export it here from within a family file, then instead of setting up the um, a, a typical Revit project or a typical IFC project with um, instances. Instead, it's what it's going to do is it's set up a effectively product library within that IFC project. So if I open it quickly here in the project browser, instead of uh, being hosted onto stories and, and a project and thing, uh, or a building site, it's instead then declaring the project's declaring this library. It has the symmetry terminal type. It has the shape representation, which is a constructive solid geometry. So that's taking some Boolean differences out of a, a, a blend and a, a cutting plane. And then it also, similar to what we saw in terms of the, um, of the types within the Revit environment, is that it also then contains the dimensions or constraints and the, the different types. So you'll see here within this uh, metric column or table, uh, of constraints, we can see the names representing the Revit parameters, and then in the table um, rows above that, we can actually see the numeric values that were in the in, in, in or in the different types contained in this. So this can parametric information um, can be conveyed, and also then there's these metrics where it's actually assigning those parametric values to the things like the extrusion height or width or um, ellipse radiuses and things like that. So that sort of information can be um, conveyed here within the IFC4 framework um, to define uh, an intelligent object. If I close this, then I want to try and demonstrate that at least you, you can round trip this with uh, if you develop these aspects of the IFC um, engine, uh, IFC framework. So I'm going to start an architectural template and then I'm going to import the uh, IFC that I just created. So we'll quickly check. In this case, it's not actually going to make an instance of that object. Instead, it's going to load the family. So at the moment, there's no um, no uh, plumbing family objects located here. Uh, if I then insert or import that IFC file using my plugin, then it will load that family and create the types for me out of that parametric information in the IFC file. So once it's loaded now, plumbing fixtures have been added uh, as a family and the types have also been recreated. I'm going to quickly just create a slab to host this uh, sanitary object on. Okay, and then I'll create an instance of one of the types. So here you can see again then it, it has it's a the file size was quite small, it's efficient and it's intelligent, and we could swap in the different types. There is a couple of different aspects or the problem here still with the Revit family not cutting the objects properly in some of these variations, but still I think it's uh, it's uh, a pretty powerful introduction or opportunity to use IFC in an intelligent way for, for sharing object libraries and content.